please, man. Pray please with a uh, cherry on top, King. It is a gorgeous Sunday. Nice weather outside. Surprising for January. It's like 60 something degrees right now. It's a good day to train some shoulders. So we got shoulders today and finishing the last bit of my pre-workout from the Gila mix that Jens got me. Yep. Thank you, Jens. I'm glad you still use oh, that. Oh, birthday present. Yep. It's my favorite color. Yep. I'll show you guys what pre I take really quick, actually. My old Young LA backpack broke, so I got this one from my first competition. I won it, men's physique. So I take Blue Star pre-workout. I've been with Blue Star Nutraceuticals since I started any sponsorships, actually. they It's the only uh, supplement company that I've ever been with because they treat their athletes really well. I love their supplements, especially their pre-workout. It's like really clean energy. Uh, this one in particular has 300 milligrams caffeine, no beta alanine in it, so you're not gonna feel itchy. Really good pumps too, and this is the only pre-workout they have. They just have a bunch of different flavors, so they don't have like any particular like pump. It's all the same, but I think that's good enough. So yeah, it's the type of pre I use. Favorite flavor is grape. Mm -hmm. Tastes like a grape soda, kind of, with no carbonation. I'd say the Rocket Pop would be number two. Yeah, great. It's the best. I'm gonna give you guys a bulk update right now. As you guys know, I haven't really been following the bulk very well because I've been taking it easy. I was kind of skipping my last meal, skipping meals here and there. Uh, but then recently my coach basically found out. He was like, you're running the same as you did at the very beginning of your bulking diet, which was about 158 to 160. And he said that I'm supposed to be at 170 right now so I'm, I'm like 10 pounds behind according to what my coach wants me, me to be at because I should be gaining 0.5 pounds every single week on the bulking diet um, and there's actually a few reasons why I personally don't like to bulk so like one reason is if you guys have followed me for a while at a young age I had like um, some mental um, Kind of like uh, eating disorders, I guess, like a small case of anorexia at a very young age. And I would basically starve myself because I had an extreme fear of getting fat, basically. It's had that fear in my mind. So if I ever gained a little bit of body fat, I would just feel terrible just with my body image. So weightlifting has been something that has helped me, but I still kind of have that stuck with me since a young age where I just hate putting on body fat. Um, and another reason is I like to stay lean for social media. Basically, like the more shredded you are, the more views you get, the more engagement you get with posts, um, videos and stuff like that. So it's just a lot easier to get a following from being shredded. Um, so those are a couple reasons why I like to stay lean year round. And it, it is easier for me with genetics and stuff too. But my coach was telling me that if I want to progress and improve and look better than I did last year when I competed, then I have to put on size. I have to be able to gain some weight to compare to the guys on stage. I'll be competing against people who are enhanced, taking a bunch of PEDs, and as a natural athlete, I have to compare to them by actually having a proper bulk. So he basically told me that I should just stop caring about what people think. Um, and the people on social media, I have half a million followers, but only about 10, 15 people in my life actually care about me. And they would actually support my decision to actually put on some weight so that I can improve. So I'm sure even my closer followers, I'm sure you guys who are watching this video will actually support my, um, my journey as I continue to put on some size. So it's also like a mental plateau, getting over 160. So for the past week, I've been back on track with the diet and I've actually seen a lot of progress and I don't think I've ever been over 10% body fat and I probably will get to that range once I go further into the bulk and then I'll probably start cutting once summer starts. So my coach definitely helped me understand that I actually should um, push my body beyond what it has before otherwise I'm just going to look the same as last year and I don't want to do that. I actually want to improve and get that pro card. So, 
the bulk is continuing and I have not given up even though it is somewhat of a mental struggle but I think I'll be able to get over it I definitely won't get fat I'm probably gonna stay below 15% body fat my abs will still be there but just not as shredded as I usually am so I'm excited to see some progress my goal is to reach about 170 or well yeah probably about 170 so I got 10 more pounds to gain and some size to put on so today we're training shoulders but I wanted to actually start with some calves I've been training my calves three or four times a week for the past six months now and I actually have seen some progress so I might do a little calf reveal for you guys to show you some size that I put on maybe a quarter inch or quarter centimeter <laughs> I don't know something but I've seen some progress because I actually want to improve on my legs Men's physique is judging legs now too, so we'll start with calves and then move into shoulders. This is working our way up. But yeah, slow on the eccentric, a little stretch at the bottom. The stretch is important with everything, especially calves. The fibers in the calves are just so dense. It takes a lot of work to actually see it, to actually do some damage. So like it's it's pretty difficult to get calves sore, but when they do get sore. Dude, they stay sore. <laughs> They're sore for weeks. Yep. That's because I have more energy at the start of the workout. Because if I just ended with calves, I wouldn't have much energy and not as much drive to actually do a good job. But when I hit three plates, I'll do 10 reps and then do drop sets. So I'll do 10, drop a plate, 10, and then drop another plate and am wrap. So just a lot of volume and heavy weight. So you do it. Yeah, man. Check out this dope shit. press. I usually do it with the, the barbells that are in the other room, but they only go to 110, which is still pretty heavy, but I want to go to like 135 maybe. That'll be a PR for behind the head. Behind the head overhead press gets a little more lateral, and then the, from the front to the top it gets more ch upper chest, like front delt. So I'm trying to target the lateral. Since it's an incline and a slight angle back, you have enough room to put it behind your head without hitting the bench. doing some lateral delts I do them I don't do them with the dumbbell anymore well sometimes I do but I prefer to do them with uh, with the plate so I got the 10 pound plates and the 25 pound plates I feel it better in my shoulder with these I think the reason why is because I can grip them a little easier than a dumbbell so just like a normal lateral raise but just with a, a plate instead you probably can't do this if you don't have plates like this where they have like a little handle on them some gyms don't have it so if your gym does have it, I recommend trying these out. I'm gonna do a drop set each set. So for my working set, I'm gonna go to the 25s, aim for about 15 reps, and then drop down to the 10s and do another 15. And I'll do that three times. Another thing that I keep in mind when I'm doing these ones is pinky up. The more you rotate your pinky, the more lateral head you get. So I think with plates, that's why I feel it more on my lateral delt, this side of the delt, because it's easier for me to rotate the pinky out. Then you have to rotate your thumb out 
you get more lack, you get more anterior. You guys can tell. Um, I'm aiming for 15 reps, and kind of like what I did for calves, I'm doing rest pause. So if I can't hit 15, I just hold it by my side for like a few seconds, and then just bang out another five more without dropping them. So rest pauses, I think, are great. I used to do these just with the cable, like just with this grip. But the grips actually do kind of help me with that pinky out technique, you know, so yeah, I can go heavier with these too. Even at the bottom, it's still pulling the out. So that's why cables are really good. I like to do a combo of free weight and, and uh, cables because with this cable at the top, that's when the uh, tension goes off a little bit. But then with the free weight, the tension is more at the top and less at the bottom. So that way you get both the best of both worlds doing free weight and cable. North code Jason for 15% off. They got great tanks and great shorts. These are great for posterior deltoids. This machine in particular is pretty rare. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but you can do it with any cable. Just grab the opposite side and do reverse flies, reverse lateral raises. And Really good shoulder workout. Uh, definitely opened up more to you guys during this video. Just want to be transparent with you guys. Like I'm definitely not perfect. I have my own issues, my own mental blocks. But really, like we're just talking about how how you're gonna grow if you're not comfortable. You have to be able to get out of your comfort zone in order to do better than we've done before. And there's really nothing to lose if I do end up getting too fat. Like my coach will notice and he'll make sure that I am looking the best possible for my next competition. So, you never know until you try. So we're gonna keep playing on size. I've already been on track with the bolt for a week now. Um, and I haven't even really put on any body fat so far. I just feel fuller and my workouts are better. So we're gonna keep pushing it and I'll keep track with my progress with you guys. So like and subscribe, we'll see you in the next one.